and I welcome you back to the Demurning Channel and today we are going to be talking about Lake Mead, we're going to be talking about Lake Powell, Lake Orville, and the Great Salt Lake. Until this drought ends, we're going to be talking about this twice a week on Sundays and Wednesdays. It is July 11th, 2021 in the afternoon where I'm at. It is a Sunday and that means it's a Lake Mead update. So without further ado, we're going to roll over to windy.com. And you can see over here by St. Louis, Columbus, Indianapolis, and Chicago that they're getting a nice swath of rain all the way back to almost Kansas City. They're going to get around an inch of rain. We need this on a regular basis out here out west. Unfortunately, you look at it, there's a high pressure that just dominates. Like we go out to the 10-day forecast, you can see that high pressure dominate and everything goes to the north, everything goes to the south, but there is a little bit of hope. So here we are down here. You're gonna get one inch just to the east of Vegas, which is on the Colorado and over here by Flagstaff as well, almost two inches in the next 10 days. Up here by the Salt Lake City, to the east, almost 0.69, Grand Junction, 3.4, Colorado west of the divide 0.6 and down here 1.7 that's good news for Lake Powell we'll be checking those levels as well but over the next three days not a whole lot going on the next five days a little bit of rain so we'll be watching that we're going to check out the water levels I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of stuff that's not happening so that's what's going on at windy.com okay as we roll over to Lake Warville the current water level is 670.65 MSL that is Sunday July 11th, 2021, 10 a.m. The level is 229.35 feet. While wow, just a few years ago, that thing was almost overflowing at 900. Winter pool is 640 feet. Flood pool is 901.0. That's when it starts to overflow. And it is down 0.65 feet since yesterday. We're getting closer to that 640 mark. Now at 640, that's when they're saying they're going to shut down the Hyatt power plant. That has never, ever happened in the history of Lake Oroville. And that is not a good situation for the people out west you start losing power you're going to have more blackouts this is not a good situation as the drought continues let's roll over to the great salt lake and see where that currently is new historic lows for the great salt lake water level as well 4,191.16 feet. Thing continues to drop. This was taken Sunday, July 11, 2021, 11:15 a.m., and that's where we stand at that. So the Lake Powell water level is currently 3,558.18 feet, well over two inches since yesterday, as it says MSL. And that was Saturday, July 10, 2021, 12 a.m. The level is currently 141.82 feet below full pool of 3,700 and it continues to drop. And wow, what a difference between 2019 and 2021. You are talking 58.67 feet between 2019 and 2021. What a difference two years makes in just that little bit of time. It's crazy. The current water level at Lake Mead is 1,068.13 feet MSL. Sunday, July 11th, 2021, 10 a.m. The level is 160.87 feet below full pool of 1,229 feet. We're 160 feet down. We're getting closer to that 150 mark every day, it seems like. But the good news is the change since yesterday is 00, zero feet, so that means it didn't drop any. So that's a good news for a change unfortunately that wasn't up two inches three inches a foot and the water level will continue to drop unless something dramatic changes over the course of the next several days now we're going to roll over to this site that i just found that shows what the water consumption is being used by the west and you can actually look for anywhere in the united states but check this graph out so i found this really cool graph this site called the csg west and it talks about all kinds of different ways people use water domestic water use is actually less in california than per se nevada nevada they use way more 190 gallons per person per day and idaho uses more than california california uses way less per person per day as far as that goes but they break down how the water is used and we're going to start off in california thermoelectric is the most 27.68 percent the public supply is only 15.30 mining 
is very little 0 0.67 there's not a whole lot of gold mining going on there as there used to be for livestock people say stop feeding the cows well california just doesn't use that much water when it comes to cows what's this big one irrigation 53.39 and we talked about the almonds so we know that a big chunk of those are going there and there's different ones too as well this is where the majority they they make lettuce there they make tomatoes there they grow all different kinds of produce there that is irrigation and that's where majority of the water goes in california we're going to go to nevada and check out irrigation in nevada 63.03 livestock 0 0.3 aquaculture 0 0.6 Six, four. So they're not even using 1% there. Industrial 0 0.25. Mining 4.16. Thermoelectric 1.55. Public supply 28.40. Domestic 1.57. We're going to go to the Utah. Utah uses the most irrigation. So this misconcept that California uses more is just not the case. Check out Utah. It's way worse 78.13 percent and the public has a lot less people living there so 11.86 so the majority of it goes here heck they don't even use that they use more for mining than other places do and thermoelectric industrial aquaculture and there you have it there we'll go to arizona arizona 77.08 so it's not quite as bad as utah and then the public supply is used in the other this is your pie chart. Colorado uses a whole lot for irrigation. 90.44. They are sure using a whole bunch. New Mexico, 84.38%. So there you have it. I mean, this is your chart right here. This is where the water is used. Go to the whole United States. The United States, the majority of it is used on thermoelectric. And the only the public supply only uses 10.78%. And irrigation is 31.22%. So the majority of that 31.22% actually comes out from the West States, to be quite frank. I mean, in the Midwest, it rains a lot. And generally, they don't have to water the thing. You may see a little irrigation along rivers they try to get higher yields but i mean those yields really don't produce because you're having to pump water from the river and that costs money to do you're using gas for pumps or electricity for pumps so therefore you're really not making no money that way as much as you would just letting it rain united states 10 percent of it's being used so there you have it you guys can check out these pie charts for yourself and dig in deeper there's some other charts down here as well and it goes on and it says 98 gallon domestic water use per capita per day gallons of water used in the united states every day 410 trillion gallons of water used every day in the united states of that number 621.212 number of olympic sized swimming pools that could be filled every day with those 410 billion gallons this is just crazy ladies and gentlemen just insane that is a high amount of fresh water being used every day by the united states think about all the water you use i mean you guys are just thinking of glass of water, your showers and your toilets alone uses a lot. But then think about all the food, like the almonds. If you eat a pound of almonds, you just ate 1,900 gallons of water that it took to produce those almonds. Meat takes a lot of water to produce that. So I will definitely link this below. This is a really good website. I highly recommend anybody checking it out. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the program, the content. And if you guys really enjoyed it, you're still with me, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And with that, much love, God bless, and we'll see you on the next one.